So this is a tutorial for how to scan the liver protocol. Uh, the liver has two lobes, left lobe and right lobe. And there's an additional small lobe, which is a caudate lobe. So we will begin with taking SAG images of the liver. Now we will ask the patient to, you know, take a deep breath in so that the diaphragm pushes the liver and we will be able to get better images um, of, the, um, of the liver. Uh, start by using a warm gel, patient care. Uh, covering the area of interest and making sure that you do not touch the patient's body with your arm or your hand. You need to keep your arm and hand, um, you know, away from the patient and there should be no contact. So starting with the first few images of the SAG of the liver. The first image is going to be the SAG left lobe. Now, whenever you're going to be taking images of the liver, you have to make sure that the TGC is optimized to show the liver echogenicity to be normal. Uh, it should not be too dark or too bright. Secondly, you also have to make sure that the liver is, uh, you know, uh, occupying most of the space. So your depth should not be, you know, too low or too high, where the liver is only small. So you have to optimize the depth in a way that you are making sure that the liver is occupying at least 80 to 90% of the image. So I'm keeping my transducer in true SAG and the transducer is touching the xephoid process. And I, with the true SAG, now I'm gonna ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold. And my first image is going to be the left lobe inferior margin with iota. Breathe out, please. So now you can see that this is the left lobe inferior margin. That's completely open from tip to tip. This tip is important for you to include you don't want to miss any masses and the iota should be open completely. So this is the first image of the SAG left lobe, inferior margin to include the iota. Now the next image is going to be to include the caudate lobe with ligamentum venosum and IVC. Now I'm going to basically just angle my probe slightly, still keeping in the epigastric area, just slightly angling towards the patient's right. Uh, take a deep breath in please. So again, so this was the first image of the, okay, take a deep breath in and hold it okay so this was the first image of the left lobe with the iota now i'm just angling more towards the right of the patient and now i have opened up the caudic lobe breathe out please so this is the caudic lobe and the anterior border of the caudic lobe is by the ligamentum venosum and posteriorly by the ivc now the next image is going to be the ivc passing through now at this point of time i'm going to increase the depth Make sure my focus is also down on the image and I'm gonna ask the patient to take a deep breath in, please. And I'm going to now open the entire IVC and with the diaphragm. So I wanna show the entire right and the left lobe on either side of the diaphragm, breathe out. So again, this is a left lobe, corded lobe, IVC is completely opened and this is the right lobe with the complete diaphragm opened up. So I increase my depth to include the right and the left lobe. Now the next image, I'm going to decrease my depth a little bit and I'm going to take the main lobe of fissure. Breathe in, please. Mm -hmm. With the depth. Yeah, breathe in. Okay. Sorry, I'm pushing. No, it's okay. Okay. You gotta hold it, please. Breathe in again. Okay. And again, I want to make sure that I do include the diaphragm and show the neck of the gallbladder Breathe out, please, with the main lobar fissure. Now, this is the main lobar fissure right here, which is, appears as a hyperechoic line. This is the neck of the gallbladder. So the main lobar fissure connects the neck, uh, the portal vein with the neck of the gallbladder, and the diaphragm should be seen completely. Now here, this image is now going to be the right lobe because it's the main lobar fissure that separates the left lobe from the right lobe. Okay. Now I'm going to bring my uh, bring my probe to the a little bit more right lateral to basically include an area which is mid clavicular. Okay, so right from the middle of the clavicle of a patient, I'm going to be taking an image, and this is going to be for the parenchyma comparison and the measurement of the liver. So again, it's going to be the right liver. Okay, breathe in, please. Okay, so now first of all, I'm going to increase the kidney. This is going to be the parenchyma comparison. 
and then I'm going to now scoop down a little bit again getting with the liver and you ready breathe in okay and again I want to make sure that I do have a tip of the liver now I'm going to measure the liver so it is a mid clavicular image measurement of the liver Now the last image of the sagittal scan, I'm going to come a little bit more oblique with my transducer, angling towards the patient's axilla. And I will be taking an image, increasing my depth and taking an image of the diaphragm with the pleural space. So breathe in please. Okay. Breathe out. So now this is what I'm including, <coughs> the entire right lobe with the diaphragm and this is the adjacent pleural space now i will be taking transverse images of the liver again the notch has to be towards the patient right make sure you don't have your hand uh, you know rested on the patient or do not contact uh, have any contact with the patient except for the transducer touching now the first image in transverse is going to be the transverse image of the left lobe to include the lateral margin okay so breathe in please so again I want to make sure that I am including breathe out IVC iota and this is the lateral margin of the liver and again in this image we will also now see the quadrate lobe in transverse separated anteriorly by the uh, I mean bordered anteriorly by the ligamentum venosum and posteriorly with the IVC. Okay, so this is the transverse image in the left lateral margin. Now the next one, I'm going to take an image of the ligamentum teres. All I'm doing is keeping my transducer in the epigastrium and then angling down, losing the portal vein and posterior in, uh, to the posterior to the portal vein, you'll see the ligamentum teres. Breathe in again, please. Okay, so now I'm just gonna angle down, center the portal vein. And as soon as I lose the portal vein, I see the ligamentum teres, which is this hyperechoic structure in the left lobe of the liver. Now, the next image is going to be, again, the images taken of the right lobe to include the three hepatics. Now, the way that I'm going to place my transducer will be parallel to the rib, core, rib cage and, and transverse oblique. Now, I'm going to ask the patient to breathe in, please. So when I ask the patient, I'm going to angle all the way in towards the diaphragm to make sure to include at least two of the hepatic veins. Oh. And then I'm going to get the same uh, place. I'm going to be angling out a little bit to get the portal vein bifurcation. So breathe in, please. So again, in for the hepatics. Can you hold it? Okay, in for the hepatics. And then you angle out. For the portal bifurcation. Oh, sorry. Oh, let's go back again. So this is what the image of the portal vein bifurcation is right here. Okay. Now I'm going to move my transducer to more, again on the right side of the patient, to uh, you know uh, maybe sometimes coronal, depending upon how the patient is, to now get an image of the right lateral inferior lobe. Now that is an inferior lobe that is basically bordering with the right kidney. So I'm going to try and get an image of the transverse kidney with the right lobe and I'm going to lose the entire kidney to look for any kind of masses and come back up to get the right lateral inferior lobe margin of the liver. So uh, breathe in please. So as you can see how I am uh, you know, losing the entire kidney and then going back up and this is going to be image of the right lateral inferior lobe margin of the liver now the last image of the liver is going to be getting the pleural space again pleural space i'm going to increase my depth i'm going to make sure that my tgc is good and again i'm going to place it oblique parallel to the rib cage and breathe in please and i'm going to rock my transducer to get the pleural space which is this one breathe out so this is the dome of the diaphragm with right lobe and the adjacent pleural space to look for any kind of pleural effusions or fluid connections. So this is basically what is the end of the entire liver protocol.